Oh, Gooners of the world. This is Joe from the Gooner podcast. Well, I feature on there. It's not my podcast, but uh, involved in that. And this is the vodcast, vidcast, vlog, whatever you like to call it. That's what it is. And this is what we're going to be talking about. I'll give you a quick flash of what's coming up. Uh, can you see any of that? The Arsenal Player of the Month we'll discuss. We'll also talk about the new England boss. What are the repercussions for Arsenal? We've got Jan Vertog- Vertongen. Vertongen. That sounds about right. Well, that's the, the new pronunciation, if you didn't know. Well, we're going to discuss, uh, could he be joining us or possibly another club? And um, Andre Arshavin, he's coming out. Uh, he's always not, he's not the shyest guy in the world, is he, when it comes to public speaking? He's got more to say. And we'll we'll discuss that, or I'll discuss that, and you'll listen. And then we're going to talk about the new signing, Lucas Podolski. We've been talking about that for a while, so I'll be brief on that, as brief as I can be. And finally, the the league running. Can we win the, not the league, the third spot? I'm talking about the third spot. Can we get third spot? I think so, but we'll go into that in more detail a bit later on. So first of all, on the agenda, April Player of the Year. Deservedly won by Thomas Rosicki. I've not been his greatest fan uh, since since he started getting a lot of injuries, but uh, 43.8% kind of says it all, really. Uh, he certainly deserves it. He's in form, and long may it continue. He reckons he's 29 years of age, by the way, in footballing terms. That's probably because he's had a couple of years sitting in sick bay. And even when he's well, he's kind of sick. He gets viruses from time to time, as, as we've found out. And, uh, well, if he plays like that with a virus, well... Let's hope we can inject him with some more viruses. Koscielny came second, uh, pushing 12%. Robin Van Persie pushing 11%. And Mikel Arteta came fourth. But Arsenal.com won't tell us how many how many votes he actually got. So that remains a mystery. Meanwhile, another thing that isn't a mystery is the England boss. Um, the position being filled, of course, by Roy Hodgson, no less. Well, I think Roy's got everything you need to be a, a top um, a top manager, I mean, even though England isn't officially what I'm supposed to be discussing here, but he's he's certainly a top manager at international level. If you can do um, miracles for a team like Switzerland, then you, you certainly you certainly got something going for you. And uh, of course, he was manager of Finland prior to that and also the UAE. So he's got a great CV. There's no taking that away from him. He's uh, good with uh, he's, he's good with the press and um, pretty good with the players from what we can understand. Even Steven Gerrard um, um, really vouching for him as a as a top manager. He just said he was in the wrong place at the wrong time at Liverpool. So that's really one of the only blocks in his copy book, apart from Blackburn. His spell there in the north in the northwest didn't go too well either. So it's almost like he's got a jinx when it comes to the northwest. So let's hope England don't play uh, at Old Trafford or somewhere like that because it's, it doesn't seem to, he doesn't seem to travel well, does he? In in this country at least. But um, good good record given the sort of teams he's uh, managed at uh, international level so hopefully he's going to do it do it for England but but that's not really what we're concerned about here what we're concerned about is how will it affect West Bromwich Albion and my answer is this I don't think it's going to affect them in a positive way at all and of course our remaining game our, we've got Norwich coming up and then after that we've got West Brom I think the West Brom game will be easier than the Norwich game even though Norwich is at home I really think we're going to feel the pressure because we're playing first before our rivals um, and uh, it's that early kickoff so will we be a bit dozy for that game hopefully not because we do certainly need to win that game uh, there's no mistake in that it's, it's essential that we win that game against Norwich um, I'll come to it later the the run-in for this third spot but we really need three points against Norwich and uh, Unfortunately, they've not had a managerial change. Whereas West Brom, they're going to be playing for a manager who is leaving the club. So they might want to give him a good send-off. In theory, it should work that way. But in practice, what normally happens is players step off the gas, almost like they've got a cup final coming up. It's, except they, it's not they don't want to get injured. It's that they're not putting the effort in because the manager's leaving anyway. So, so there's a certain amount of motivation leaves the player. I think play, all players tend to do their best at all times. Although some might argue about Andre Arshal. I, mean, I personally just think, as, a, as Arsene Wenger said, he was an economical player when he was playing for us. And perhaps he played for us again. We'll come to that later. But, but uh, really, I think the, the West Brom players are not going to give it their all against us. Um, they will, uh, technically speaking, they'll run around the park, but they, there'll be something missing in their makeup, and I and I really feel that we can capitalise on that. So I'm less worried about the Hawthorne's trip 
than I am about Norwich coming to uh, the Emirates Stadium because it's a real proper day out for them and then no pressure. We'll be under a lot of pressure against Norwich. Make no mistake about that. So enough said on that. Um, that's going to be the repercussions. Oh, one more thing. Of course, Harry Redknapp being out of the picture means that Spurs are back on form. We saw it uh, the other night when they uh, when they smashed uh, four goals past uh, Bolton. I mean, you know, they could have scored more. I mean, perhaps they did. Perhaps I'd switched off the TV at four and forgot about the rest. But, well, they look in form now. And I think we've got to be really careful. I think they've more or less got the best team out there, apart from at left back. They've got Rose playing now. It's not as good as the other guy. Um, so... You know, he's still learning the game, but he did all right. Um, but anyway, I think Spurs are going to come in strong at the end. And again, I'll cover that later. So we need to be on our game against Norwich in particular. West Brom, not as much because I think we can we can win that, even though it is away from home. But um, somebody was saying um, on Twitter um, how great our defence has been. Well, we let a goal in against Stoke. So that that is perfect, is it? But uh, Stoke are a difficult team to play away from home, uh, even though they're not being in the best of form. Uh, Crouch is always difficult to mark and scoring a header. I suppose it was inevitable. Um, I predicted that that score right, so I have to big myself up there. So I didn't say the score line. I said it would be a draw, and and so it turned out to be. But uh, some of the other results lately have been so unpredictable. Uh, but anyway, what we would like is a predictable back four, and Jan Vertonghen, if I'm pronouncing his name right, could arrive uh, from Ajax for seven million. Pounds, of course, he knows uh, he knows the the Verminator very well, having played a lot alongside him for Belgium. He's got a lot of caps for Belgium. He's only 25, so he's still one for the future. He's kind of going to be reaching his peak within the next two years. They normally say footballers reach their peak at 27. Perhaps for defenders, it's a little bit later than that. Anyway, we are also hearing from the Daily Mail that Spurs could hijack that move and bring him to White Hart Lane. Personally, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think uh, there's supposed to be interest from Newcastle and Chelsea. Uh, I'd have to say I think he's most likely to join us uh, because it's been long on the cards. I haven't got any particular inside knowledge on it. It's just it's just really a case of applying applying logic to the situation. Who's he going to want to play with? Is he going to want to play with uh, Thomas Vermaelen, who he knows inside out, or is he going to want to play with a bunch of strangers and uh, playing for a team further down the league than we are? The other teams, obviously Chelsea and Newcastle, both further down the league. Chelsea possibly on the road to winning some silverware this season, perhaps. He's going to wait until uh, until this season completely pans out before making his decision. But uh, one good thing about the club this uh, in this season, coming near the end of this season, is we're actually doing business early. And bringing in Lucas Podolski, Podolski of course, means that we do mean business. £11 million reportedly. Uh, it's always undisclosed with, with our club for some reason or another, but uh, so we have to uh, make up our own figures about exactly how much um, changed hands. But great to have Lucas Podolski in. He's, a, he's been long targeted by our club and a number of other clubs, so it's great news indeed that, that we've got him uh, coming to the Emirates Stadium. One player who won't be coming to the Emirates Stadium ever again, perhaps, unless it's for another team, is Andre Arshavin, but he's uh, remaining coy. Uh, about his future, he said, everything will be decided after the European Championship. Symbols. That's not the best Russian accent in the world, I know that, but it's the best I can do off the cuff like that. Anyway, looking at the Championship running, I, I'm going to flash you my little screen, which is pretty rubbish, I have to say, but there's the remaining fixtures. As I told you before, I think uh, we could pretty much write off Chelsea. I pro proved to be right about that, but I didn't predict they're going to smack five past QPR. That was that was a shock. Um, so that seemed to suggest they were in form. But um, yes, I'll, I'll show you this again because I think you'd probably rather see that as bad badly written as it is. You'd rather see that than my ugly face. Well, Tottenham, uh, they're only one point behind now, as are Newcastle. Chelsea, five points behind. And uh, they've got Liverpool away next. And, and you've got to see that as a draw, probably. They'll probably be sick of playing each other by then. It'll be uh, 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 that's how I see that game panning out. Uh, it's after the cup final, of course, and I think both both teams. I can see that being a nil nil. Villa away for Spurs. Interesting, because Villa really need the points, but can they get the points against Spurs? The way they're playing, you'd have to say no. They might get one point against Spurs. Let's hope so. Um, I'm not seeing it like that. 
Um, I thought Spurs would have, would have dropped two points away at Bolton. Of course, they they romped home, and uh, Adebayor playing a major part in that. Um, as did Van der Vaart, a player I always wanted us to get, but never happened, unfortunately. But anyway, enough on that. But what about Newcastle? How the, how can they fare against Manchester City at home? That's the next game. I can't see them beating Manchester City. It could be a draw. I fancy City to win that. So I think Newcastle, if they lose that and we win against Norwich, they're out of it. They won't get third spot. But if... Spurs managed to win away at Villa and we managed to sneak home a win against Norwich, which I think we will. Um, it's going to be us v Spurs for that third spot. And of course, if Chelsea draw against Liverpool, which I suspect they will, um, they'll be out of it as well. They're, they're, there's no margin for error for Chelsea at all. And of course, there's no margin of error for us if, if Spurs indeed win their two remaining games. And I can see them doing just that. But let's not forget their final... Final game of the season looks simple enough, Fulham at home, but local derbies are never simple. And plus, we've got the Martin Yole thing going on there. He's not going to necessarily let his team roll over for his former club. Perhaps he feels some resentment about the way he was treated and offloaded. We have to hope so. Anyway, I, I think Spurs will win it, but I don't think it's going to be a canter or at a canter. Where Newcastle, their final game away at Everton. I think I think if they obviously if they don't overcome City then I think they could be out of the equation anyway by then. But I think I think they've got a chance of getting three points away at Everton. I think a draw is more likely. So I see I see Newcastle not catching us up unless we were to lose if we lose it's unthinkable, I know if we lose our final two games then Newcastle could could catch us and and be a point ahead if, if they just got two draws. Whereas Spurs, we're really looking at... I just I just can't see them not getting maximum points. Minimum they'll get is four. They'll get four points from these, these uh, two remaining games. So that means we have to get four points. But I think we're going to need six in reality because I see Spurs getting six points. And Liverpool... Uh, sorry, Chelsea um, will probably get four points as well, which means even if we lost our final two games, which is unthinkable, Chelsea will still be behind us. I just can't see them catching us at all. So there you have it. That's my prediction. Uh, my predictions have been, you know, on and off. I mean, as far as Arsenal are concerned, I think our last four games I've predicted two correctly. Uh, Stoke, I got right, and Manchester City, that victory. I got the Chelsea game wrong because I said we'd win that, and of course we only drew, and who would have predicted the Wigan result? Nobody. I mean, not even Mystic Meg. And Well, maybe I should give Mystic Meg a call. Shall I do that now? Hello, Mystic. Are you there? Oh, no. No, no. It's a different, it's a different uh, line. They've changed that line. Anyway, please do uh, leave your comments. And, um, you know, p particularly if it's positive, if, if it's negative. Perhaps I don't want to know about it. Um, but anyway, I'll just do this for fun. And... Uh, don't be too harsh. All right. Until the next time. Um, well, what do I say? What do I say as, as a goodbye? Um, go Gooners.